Join us, MrTruck.com, for truck reviews, trade reviews, and accessory reviews. Different. This is my friend Juan, and we're comparing this to the H3, his Hummer he plays with in the mountains, too. And this is, you know, look real similar in size. He's got that five or whatever it is. Uh, this is the 27 V6 here. I don't remember on that one, but I got the yeah. i5. Yeah, the i5. Yeah. Inline five. This is yeah a little different configuration, 10 speed, and you got a manual. Is a five speed manual? Yes, I got a five speed manual. Yeah. Um, so I mean, those are hard to find. Yeah. The, you, that's the only, I mean, I love my home, I really do. It's lack power, but it can crawl over anything. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. You have lockers on it? Yes, I got uh, I got rear lockers on that. Oh, cool. Yeah, this is all waterproof in here, so we can play. Now, here's the mode button. If you turn this on, look in the dash, you see the different modes, like rock climbing and all that. Mm. Yeah, maybe it'll go through all the modes. There we go, slippery, mud ruts, sand. Yeah, I saw this. So you can do all that, and then if you put it like in, if we can figure out where the rocks is it'll actually there we go mud ruts now it'll actually put it in four wheel drive and put it in low range and i think it does the lockers yeah you can watch the lights up here oh, i had to put the yeah, rear locker on it's a rear locker on right off the bat and, and look at that there's the backup camera and then where's the well, is it the forward well, why, camera why is it showing the it's a forward camera yeah it's showing the yeah let's see if it shows all the other options it has for cameras yeah we can do a 360 and we can do the front camera we just showed you and that's a, a big wide angle of the front. And then I don't know what's that last one. Does it show that tire when you turn a corner? Oh, oh it'll it show the, you the tires. Yeah, that's Just, pretty cool. So that is really neat. That's useful yeah, when you're on trail. Yeah, and then if we do that circle and push this one button, it'll lock up that tire whichever direction we're turning so you can mm. do the real quick switchbacks and all that stuff. Well, that's awesome. This has so many toys, it'll take a while. And if you look down here, it's a 7,000, one of 7,000. Trouble every day. Well, we're out here in the sand hills, and you've got like any, an ATV or a motocross track or something. Yeah, a motocross track. Was he on does? Oh yeah, it's got pretty good uh, departure angle and approach angle, and there we go. <laughs> and it's got a thing up here where you can put like your your camera, your radar detectors, and it plugs into a USB port. Oh, that's pretty neat. Yeah. Oh, cool. Look at that front camera. We can really see what you're doing here. Yeah. Well, let's, let's see if it'll go up the hole. Over think here. it'll go straight up the hill? <laughs> let's see how far it can go up the hole. Oh, I don't think it'll go too far. I guess I haven't been around this corner. Yeah, it looks like a straight wall ahead of us. I'm not sure that's going to work. <laughs> yeah, it, see, it sees that there's a whole, a whole wall ahead of us. You don't even have lockers on the front, do you? I don't think it's gonna go all the way up. Nope, but hey, it did pretty good. <laughs> Look, you can yeah. see the wall. Yeah, we're, we're into the wall here. We're into the wall. Oh, and it's telling you what side was closer. Oh, yeah. This, that was pretty neat. Yeah, that's awesome. And now it's telling me that this is pretty close back here. Yeah. Holy oh. cow. There you go. I like to do that with my Hummer. I've gone up that. Oh, really? Yeah, well, look at the tracks. You see the tracks halfway up the hill. Yeah, that one's starting to digging in. Yeah, that one's starting to digging in. That's why that one corner was closer. These are pretty good tires. I was surprised how quiet they are on a highway, but they've got some big sipes. And well, they got pretty good... I like how they didn't just start digging in immediately yeah. in the sand. Now these tires, I like them. They're 35 inches. I think they're at least a 12 and a half wide, but look at big sipes on it. These are quiet and got great traction. We've got playing in the sand. We're going to play in the rocks next. But this thing really gets up and scoots and has great traction with all the lockers and all the stuff it comes with. Sasquatch. Which is right. really good. Yeah. So, take it around the track where we do the dirt bikes. <laughs> well, cool. Have sunflowers everywhere out here. Boy, the camera just takes it all away. Oh yeah, that is so cool. 
Do we need to put the front locker on? No. Nope. Oh, wow. Like, I can go through here without any lockers on my homers. Yeah. And yeah, this thing can too, because it's... Well, yeah. I just groomed the track not too long ago, and it's... Yeah, this stuff grows back on. fast. We get a lot of rain out here. Oh, here's a whoop de do. Yeah, this was a little double. Whoop. Tee do. Whoop. Tee do. <laughs> well, that's cool. You got berms dug in the corner so you can oh, yeah. fly around. This right here, this here has turns to help you practice on dirt mites. Yeah, we gotta try that one little wheel locker right there. Yeah, let's do it. This one right here. We got I got them. Okay, right let's see. Let's push this button. As far as I can tell, we'll push that one. There we go. Now let's see how tight a corner it can make. Oh, that's pretty mm -hmm. cool. Now hopefully it knows how to switch directions. Please check surroundings. They're flowers. <laughs> yeah. Relax, Carl. It wants us to stop and smell the roses again. <laughs> <laughs> uh. This one's a tight one. We'll see if it hangs it up. Yeah. Well, it is tight. That's like a. At least it is. Wow, that was so cool. Okay. Well, so you could really feel that one. Yeah, so you have to actually get to a certain degree before it grabs onto yeah, it. Yeah, I think so. And get accelerate just a little bit so that it can make that wheel spin and help turn you. Yeah, we'll see what it does to this one then. There it is. Oh, wow, look at that. It just goes sideways. Oh, that is so cool. I should get out and take a picture of that from the outside. How many more corners you got up here? Uh, we can, oh, we got two more corners. I got a really tight one over there we can do. Okay, I want to get out and take a picture of you doing that, because that was pretty cool. That would help with a lot of these switchbacks. They're yeah. really tight. Like bear pass. Yeah, especially <laughs> in a four-door, yeah. In a four-door, you got those problems. In a two-door, you can just turn anywhere, but it helps to have some, some help with a four-door. We can do it here, everyone. Okay, let me jump out. Okay. Isn't that cool? Wow, that is so cool. That brake just held. You can see it locking up in the sand, and it just turned on a dime. Whoa. Now, on sand, that might not help. It might in, dig you in. In sand, that it may get you stuck. So you don't want to do it in sand unless you absolutely have to. Okay. <laughs> we just did it in sand, so I guess we're breaking all the rules. Yeah, well, right here we got... We got tractors and everything else. <laughs> yeah, we got tractors, we got Hummers, and we got uh, other things. Yeah. And this uh, this doesn't have a winch on. It looks like you'd have to have a you know a bumper way ahead of it because I can see the intercooler is sticking out the bottom part of this bumper. So you'd have to have a bumper that that goes forward quite a ways. Hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, this is the one up pretty tight. Oh yeah. This one here, you really gotta crank it to turn it. So. Oh wow, it's locking up the tire, and it is digging in. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just have to. <laughs> yeah, if we would have didn't not done that right, it probably would have stuck us in the ground. Yeah. <laughs> There's deep sand out here. Well, next week we're going to be up on rocks and the mountains, and this is a good contrast to be doing sand today. This is awesome. Man, I like that. It just spins right around. You can do kitties all over the place. Here's our alley-oop up and over the big hill. Does it do you the degree? Oh, it kind of does Let's see, do, should we put it in rear? 10, yeah. 11%. 11%. Should we put this in rear locker and out of this? Or what do you think? Mm. Let's try it now. I got rear locker and not that corner breaking. Yeah, thing. I wonder how we do it without any lockers. Would it just... Well, we can try it. I mean, this has got front and rear lockers. It's made to go anywhere. We can try. You can see it there in your screen, too. It shows you that we got the yeah, rear it locker. Lock. Yeah. That's the tick slam of this thing. Well, now we're dropping. Dropping like a rock. 
This is where there a kinetic rope thing somewhere in here. Oh, that was in there? That yeah, was yeah. Cool. Let's see how it does with Willie's office hand. <laughs> Willie's? <laughs> no way to really soft it, soft it, oh, sand. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go up that little ridge. Holy cow! We're probably going to have to have lockers or you're going to dig in there. Oh, the locker's on. Oh, front locker? That's a rear locker, though. We don't have the front locker on. Let's see what that does. As they select, Some uh, of those you have to put it in neutral to get that to work. The select on the front one and available in, well it has to be available in four wheel drive. What else would you use a front locker? Uh this is good. Four low. Okay, yeah, put yeah, put in your neutral. Probably have to do neutral to do that. Yeah, yeah I'm four in shift in progress. Okay. Now we're really gonna dig like crazy. Wait a minute, yeah. Okay, it's it's, it's going So we were in four high. Yeah, we were in we're four, four high. high. Now see, advanced track is off. Now we want to do both. Yeah, both. Wow, now that's cool. Doing both. So you can't do front locker. What is cool, what I just noticed, you can be in four high and have a rear locker on. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty cool. That is good, because you're right, a lot of them don't like to do that, to like it all being four low. Oop. My mistake. So, so we're going to climb over this here pile of whatever this is. And it knows that we're touching the front bumpers on the sand. Whoa, holy cow. We're showing sand back everywhere. Holy cow. I should get out and take a video of this. I don't think you can get clear over. <laughs> you want? Not, no, I don't go. <laughs> I think it takes some speed to go clear over. Yeah, you can see where the bumper's hitting. Wow, we we're digging holes in there. Look how tall that is. You can see it taller than the. Yeah. The ice cream there. Yeah, let me get out and take a video of that. Oh. Oh, Holy cow! Don't go away, Mr. Chuck. TV. We'll be right back. <laughs> well, we worked this by an H3 Hummer. Just to get a little bit of size comparison. It looks like a hair bit wider. It all depends on where your fenders are. What size engines in the Hummer? I got a five cylinder. Oh yeah, that's right. That's I got right. The I5. Does that have that shaft that goes through the engine? The steering shaft? No, not this one. Okay. Yeah, very similar back doors. Except the H3 is a one piece and the two piece on the Ford Bronco. Very close to the similar sizes. My two favorite toys, the Beast, the old 87 first edition Wrangler, and the first edition Sasquatch Bronco 2021. Of course the Bronco is an unbeatable one, but the other one is my classic. I still have fun with it, but man oh macro, this Bronco is the cat's meow. Yep, $60,000. No place to hang your shirts in the back seat. Nothing at all up there, no rods. I had to take one of the, the grips loose to hold the roof on and stick the shirts through, hangers through that loop. So, well. Okay, looky, looky, a bolt came out of the door. I think the last guy who drove this took the doors off and didn't get these tight. So it just fell out of the hinge. Well. Okay, I figured out it's a 14 millimeter. Now I'm gonna go put this back in that hinge. So now I'm tightening that bolt up on the hinge. Okay. Well, I tightened all the bolts up on all the doors just in case. I was going to take these doors off on the roof. We went off-roading with it, but it worries me a little bit about this door. 
so I don't want to hurt the, the Bronco. And it may be fine now tightening up the bolts. But now there's a noise. It used to be popping and all kinds of things. Now it closes like it's supposed to. Now here's an amazing thing too. See, the window doesn't go all the way into that rubber because this thing has to roll up after you close it. It comes down. Then you close it. That's wild. Now it's interesting on this Bronco how this all works. You open up the back door with the spare tire on it and that's the only latch you have, which I like that idea. Then the window just flips up. But here's what you gotta watch. Make sure you get this door completely open on the bottom before you try to do the other one. Because the rubber is right next to it. Anyway, there's the independent suspension of the piggyback shocks. Aluminum lower arm. Whoa. That is too cool. A lot of metal down here. There's your first skid plate under your nose. And it just goes back and back. Skid plate under your engine. Transfer case. And clear back to the fuel tank. Whoa. <clears throat> A lot of reinforcing under here. A lot of heavy metal. And there's that raptor looking bumper that comes apart in pieces if you run into too many rocks. Look at the massive drive shaft the CV joints on it. Man, that is a big shaft. Holy moly. Reminds me of the old raptor. It's got all kinds of air holes in it so you can get air to the engine. Recovery hooks are a little different. Looks like they're cast and made for D-rings or whatever you want to use on them. I like that old bull bar there. It's the kind of bumper I wanted for my truck but it didn't quite work out. It's going to take too long to get them. We went out and played in the sand today. You can see sand on the fenders. We had these tires just spinning. Had the lockers going. It was fun. Quite capable. The old Bronco. Well, there's the old five link suspension back here. Big old coil. Yeah. And there's the tracking bar. <coughs> Yes, quite a frame under this thing. All boxed in. Like that shock absorber. Bracket's about the lowest thing back here. Yep. You can see the skid plate on the fuel tank. And then you can see the uh, <coughs> zoom in on the there is a transfer case. Right there. It's got a big skid plate under it. Pretty well protected under here. Exhaust is all tucked up. Out of the way. It looks like an off-road rig. The backup camera sticks out past the hub so you actually get a good view. It has that pole attached to it, so it'd be easier to slide that big, heavy spare tire back on there and get the studs started. Yes, indeed, good looking wheels. The Bronco sure has a lot of choices for lights. There on the left, you can see you can put, turn the lights on the end of the mirrors. You got the automatic headlights or regular headlights. You got all the dimming switches for your dash. A lot of cool stuff. And of course, over here, you got your cruise and your lane departure and your volume. And then that bar section right up there is how you determine how close the radar lets you get to that car in front of you. Let's see. I can turn this on so you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah, you can see those bars right across the front of the car. And that's how you set the radar for how far you want to be from that car in front of you. Interesting dash. A lot of options there. There's the pitch and roll section. Your tack is really weird. I mean, I think mile per hour is good, but and it works better than a regular mile per hour because they're all done, and goodness, you got 20 mile per hour gaps, and hopefully you can find the right speed, but you can always look at the speedometer there. And the tack, let me see if all I can show you. Let me see what I can show you, but 
and the steering wheel. The OK and the forward and back and all of that on your normal phone controls. Let's see, let me switch what you see over here. It's interesting, you can make the gauges bigger or smaller. There's your power. You put it in four-wheel drive and lockers. There's your air pressure in the tires, which is nice, they're all individual. And here you go. You can separate these out so they're full size. That's the turbo. Below that is the engine heat. And then transmission heat or temperature. And there's your voltage. And we keep going through these puppies. Yeah, that's where it shows the individual gauges, which is interesting. Yes, indeed. Let me see. Let me twirl this around. And you can decide what you want. And there it shows an 18.4. The high end was like 21.6, I think. Yes, indeed. And your time. Where's that goat knob? The goat modes. You got two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive high and low, and four auto, which is kind of neat. Then the middle button. <coughs> this middle button, that's the one that sets up your trail control, which is really cool. And the one pedal drive. Twist this top knob. Yeah, there they are, and then you pick them. It's normal, and then we just keep rotating them. Goes back one. Eco mode doesn't add a lot trying to save fuel. It's slippery. And then it puts it in full drive all by itself, just like the Raptor. And then you go over to mud ruts, and of course it locks the rear differential. And you can turn all these other things. This is so cool. The options they give you mud ruts, sand, Baja. Of course you want to try out Baja. Your picture of the tires, which is so cool when you're trail riding, you can actually look at both front tires and see where they're headed. You can steer those around and see where they're going. We use that a lot on the trail to try to avoid the rocks. And let's see. Ken with Mr. Truck here with a really exciting trailer accessory. You know, trailer tires is a big deal. You got problems, especially 100 degree weather like we're having this year. You know, you're going to blow tires, and the tires are going to blow, take out your fender, take out your clearance lights, and then you're going to sit there in the side road fixing your tire while your horses get hot. Sun coming down 100 degrees, no doors open, and no fan. It's horrible. And I see it happen all the time, and so I go to higher ply tires, and I go to Tucson Tire Pressure Monitoring System. they got so many options. You can go with bands on the Alcoa wheels, that's such a small hole. You can go with the tire pressure monitoring where you have a valve stem and the, re and the relay below it. A transmitter and then you can do the same transmitter on a band and now the new one I call them space balls but they're actually tire pressure monitoring from Tucson ball sensors like a ping pong ball rubber coated and you put this in your tire you, you crack open the bead throw it in there and it bounces around goes right for a little while and then once you get up to speed it just sticks to wherever it's at you know ahead of time what's going on this gives you special alerts before, if the tire pressure is too high, it goes off, beeps and flashes. Too low, it beeps and flashes. Same way with heat. And this will save you a lot of money. You know, price of a tire will pay for one of these puppies. And why would you not want to know what's going on with the trader tires? Mm -hmm.